give me a happy marriage. That prayer cannot be answered. I'm not cursing anybody. The prayer can only be answered when you have done what you should do. God will not do. You can't ask God in prayer to do what he has already commanded you to do. What I want to share with us this morning in the second and in the third service has to do with something very fundamental with our Christian walk with God. This aspect of, uh, uh, of God's word, no matter how long you have been in faith, no matter how long you have been in church, if you don't understand it well, it can lead to a lot of frustration. It can make you live a defeated life. It can make you struggle over things that are already freely given to you. You and I know that the death and the resurrection of Jesus has made available to us certain things that are freely given to us. Freely what? Given to us. Divine health is your heritage. Long life is your heritage. Divine prosperity is your heritage. Grace is your heritage. But if you don't understand what I'm about to, about to share quickly, you may be struggling for the things that are already freely given to you. So let's read John chapter 6, verse 53 to 56. John chapter 6, verse 53 to 56. I'll be speaking on one with God. I'll say I'm one with God. Say I am one with God. It's commonly said that one with God is the majority. John chapter 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. I don't know any other way to say it, but that's just what it is. <laughs> like the Americans would say, it is what it is. It is what it, this is what it is. If you <laughs> look at it again, I say to you, Jesus was the one speaking. If you have the Bible, the Bible where they read, they write the things Jesus said in red. That thing should be written in red in your Bible. I mean, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Somebody said, but I'm breathing. There are three types of life. The animal life, the plant life, and the God's kind of life. There are three kinds of life. So if he says you have no life in you and he's talking to those who are breathing, he's not referring to that life you sustain with oxygen. He's not referring to the animal life. He's referring to something totally different. That you can be breathing and not be alive in God. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. It is a you may not, it's a you don't have life. So just like we sustain our animal life with oxygen, we sustain our God's life with the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So if you're a child of God, you don't need bread alone to be alive. Oh, you need the physical bread to be physically alive, but to be spiritually alive in Christ, you need the word. I say, I need the word. So the next verse 54, quickly because of our time. Verse 54, John 6, 54. Whosoever eats, you see it's there, continuous. It's not one time. Whosoever eats, present continuous test. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. He said, I'm, I'm talking about eternal life. I'm talking about Zoe. I'm talking about God's kind of life. He said, this is when you habitually eat my flesh. And you habitually drink my blood. He said, you don't have it. He said, and I will raise him up at the last day. Let's go to 55. We're going to 56. 55. For my flesh is what? Food indeed. Thank God for your aku eba amala. Tuo chinkafa tuo ndawa. Tuo whatever. Thank God for them. 
but my flesh is food indeed. And my blood drink indeed. What we are talking about this morning is not for children. It's for adults. These are scriptures that separate the boys from the men. Many of us understand Philippians 4.19. I will supply all your list, but you need to understand this one too. Many of us quote Philippians 4.19 all the time. The Lord shall supply all my needs according to his Jesus. Those are nice scriptures, but please, you need to add this one to it. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Let's go to the next verse, the last verse, verse 56. He who eats, you see present continuous, he who eats my flesh and drink my blood, this is where we are going, abides in me and high in him. So one of the things communion reminds us of is our union with God. Every time we come to the communion table, we are to be reminded that we are one with God. Who, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I abide in him. That means we become one. Whatever cannot embarrass Jesus will not be able to embarrass you again. Whatever cannot oppress Jesus will not be able to oppress you anymore. Because if I am one with him, where will sickness stay in my body? If I am one with him, where will failure stay in my life? If I am one with him, how can I be one with him and be on the floor? Let me say I'm one with God. Some of us cannot even say. Say it boldly, I am one with God. Communion means coming into union. Communion. The word, another word for communion in the Bible is fellowship. Fellowship. Ononia in the Hebrew. Every time we come to the communion table, we are to be reminded that we are in union with God. Communion. We are in union with the Spirit of God. We are in fellowship with God. Please never lose the consciousness that you are one with God. It's not on Sunday alone you are one with God. It's not when you are in church alone that you are one with God. It's not when you are praying alone that you are one with God. It's not when you are quoting scriptures and you are saying Holy Ghost fire that you are one with God. You are one with God 24-7. You need to be conscious. That you are in union with God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. He said, if you eat my flesh and he said, then you will abide in me and I will what? I will abide in you. That means we will come into union. When you eat food, the food we eat every day, what happened to the nutrients in the food? It becomes one with us. We excrete the ones we don't need. But for the nutrients... It becomes part of the body. Am I correct? If that can happen in the natural, every time you eat his flesh and his blood, you are joined together with him. His DNA becomes your DNA. His divine nature becomes your divine nature, your, your, your natural nature. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because, listen to me, somebody said, but pastor, this is just bread and uh, wine. This is not bread and wine. This is his body and this is his blood. So, but Pastor, how can you just believe that? Because the same night he took bread, he took bread, he took bread. The Bible didn't say he didn't take bread. He confirmed what he took, that it was bread. But when he stretched it to them, he said, take it, this is my body. Bread, body. When did he, when, at what point from his hand, from the plate, did bread become body? What brought bread to body? I'm going to teach, I, I want to take time, even in the second service, the third service too. It is your faith too. You can actually eat bread and go back home the same way this morning. And you can eat the body of our Lord Jesus. 
We have a case in this church, somebody had physical goiter and continuously took communion until the goiter disappeared. Somebody had kidney stone, couldn't go for operation. Eight communion, eight communion, one night, excrete, uh, only God knows how it came out, maybe he says, but it, she, she brought the picture to us and showed us what came out from her body. Why you are eating bread? Some people are eating the body. So you better wake up. Why you are tasting whether it's agege bread or kafancha bread? Somebody is eating the body of Jesus. He took bread. I'm very optimistic that Judas is cannot eat bread that night. If he are eating his body, we change his mind. <laughs> it was bread he took. That's why the thing could still stay inside him. The things of God are supernatural. The Bible says, he said, the things of God are spiritually the sun. This flesh cannot comprehend the things of God. These five senses cannot comprehend the things of God. How can you say to a blind man, how can you say to a lame, take up your bed and walk? It has no prayer. He didn't say in Jesus' name, take up your bed and walk. He said, take up your bed and walk. As if he has never been, as if he has always been walking. That means he switched to another dimension. Beyond the five senses to the sixth sense. Your faith brings you out of your five senses. These five senses is very limited. Many of us only believe what we can see, what we can touch, what we can taste. And it is limiting our Christian work. It is limiting our experience in God. Our five senses are the major problems we have. Not witches and wizards. So Judas took bread, he said, oh, God, don't deserve this one, that bread. His senses did not allow him penetrating to the higher dimension. So, and because he ate bread, he got what bread can offer. And those who hate the body got what the body can offer. Today, if you're watching online, get your communion material ready. As many that will partake from his flesh and his blood, what the body of Jesus can deliver will be delivered into your life. You can't hit the body of Jesus and walk out the same way. Yes, sir. Possible. Oh, no, 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 no. The body of Jesus. You can't hit it. We eat it. Somebody say, Pastor, we eat this in every way. We're eating it on Sunday, last Sunday of the month again. Because out of all the New Testament mystery, this is one of the most powerful mystery. Out of all the New Testament mystery, this is one of the most powerful New Testament mystery. Where we gather and drink blood. Hey! Kadakoshakaya. Where we gather to drink the blood of the only begotten Son of God. We are here to drink blood. <laughs> Some people are scared already. Some people are scared. Witches and wizards gather to drink blood. The blood of sinners. We are here to drink the blood of the only begotten Son of God. We are superior. This gathering is blood sucking gathering. Karakoshoko. So if there are witches and wizards tormenting you, it's because you don't know what you are drinking. If a look, a, if dog barks at you, woo, woo, dog is trying to intimidate you, Abby. If you turn to run, what will happen? The dog, uh, the dog, that means you have shown him your back. The dog will pursue you. But if a dog do, whoo, whoo, you say, whoo, whoo, the dog will stop. No matter the kind of dog. Be, if, before it takes any decision, it will stop first. And say, this one too is a dog. Then why is he standing on two legs? Why is he taller than me? Maybe this is a superior dog. He will change his mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Today I declare, whatever has been intimidating you before today, after this impartation through the power and the blood and the body of Jesus, you begin to intimidate that thing. Amen. Whoever is trying to intimidate you, you intimidate them. Amen. Look, the understanding we, are, we have on this mountain is the reason why we are having strange testimonies. The testimonies on this altar, in this place, is not like those kind of things where you'll be rolling, you'll be, we don't, just naturally, is happening, because the moment you eat and drink his blood, 
the nature of God comes inside you. Because the life of every flesh is in the blood. So he said, if you don't drink my blood, you don't have life. He knows what he's saying. Because in Leviticus, the life of every flesh is in the blood. Medical science, if they want to know you, they say, bring your blood sample. Abi? If a woman is pregnant and she does urine test, it can fail. It can be correct. It can be wrong. But if it is blood test, blood test does not speak the lie. I mean, so blood speaks. When Abel, Cain killed Abel, he taught everything and nobody saw him. God said, the blood of Abel has reported you to me. He said, because the blood is crying out to me. And the Bible says, if the blood of Abel speaks, how much more is the blood of Jesus that speaks better things?